Good evening, welcome to Show Studio. Another day in Paris Men's Fashion Week, another panel. And tonight we're going to discuss Berluti. This is the first show by Chris Van Hash, who was announced at Berluti in April of last year, 2018. Um, he, as most of you know, he was at Dior Homme for about 10 years. Um, and then he, uh, and then when Alessandro Sartori left Berluti to go to Zegna, panel that we covered 10 days ago, um, there was this moment with Heider Hackerman at Berluti for two, three seasons, and then um, Chris was announced. Um, he didn't have to show last season in June. Uh, this is his first show, and so it's his first time at Berluti, but also it's the first time that he shows women's with men, not many sh looks, but it's the first time ever that something for a woman bears the signature of Berluti. So the, show, the shows had happened already, so we have seen it. Most of us have probably made some opinion. And so with no further ado, I will ask my uh, incredible panel to introduce themselves, and then we will start the conversation. Starting from you, Eric. Yes, hello, I'm Eric Dyer, and I'm a footballer for Tottenham Hotspur in England. I'm Andrew Davis and I'm a menswear stylist. I'm Liana Elliott-Young, co-founder of Communist. And I'm Carlo Brandelli, ex-menswear designer, now doing artistic projects. So, a beautiful, very diverse panel in terms of expertise, so I'm very happy about that. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, I don't know if you have noticed or read, but strangely enough, Chris Vanache in the past two days has given three main interviews. Mm. WWD, FT, and Vogue, uh, and I've read them, and he said more or less the same things in different terms to everybody, mm. but f first for me it was a bit weird that he speaks so much at the eve of his show, it's like he needed to explain something before showing, but of course he said that he started from the shoes up, mm. uh, he described some materials, some leather that are treated like the, with the same patina as the shoes, but it took six months to do, and you know, and he explained about the return of tailoring, which he said it never really went away, you know, there was this weird moment where tailoring seems like a vulgar word, but actually mm. give a man a modern suit and he will love to see himself in it. Uh, and he explained a little bit his take on this, but um, uh, we've seen the show. I'm not surprised from what I've seen, but I would like to know, I don't know who wants to start the conversation and tell me what they thought. I just, oh. Everybody's looking at the yeah. woman. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really interesting. You noted at how much the conversation there was prior to the show. And I'm someone who's like a, a kind of staunch minimalist to be dealing with a heritage brand. It was really interesting for me to see the continual metaphors that were in the collection, specifically around the, the pattern that you were talking around, the, the place that it was set in the um, Opera, Opera Garnier. Garnier. Yeah, so um, it was all these, you know, he, he kept pushing this kind of, these metaphors between talking about the craft and artisan. So the, the coloring you can see on the, on the Coats. Yeah, on the coat, sorry, I'm, doing, I'm pointing over there, um, was based on, on the tables and the stains that were on the tables in the, in the workrooms. So all of this really interesting, like, linguistical kind of conversations going on. But for me, it, I feel like it's not there yet. I, I, I don't know, I feel like a minimalist and craft, the two together. Is it two positives which equal a negative? I don't know, I feel like, even though had, there was so much time, I feel like, I, w I still want to see more. I don't think it's quite there yet because there's so many... I mean, he spoke really eloquently and obvious conversation around the codes of a house, you know, who's at Dior, and then, then starting with somebody who... Or being within a brand that is about craft and artisan and luxury and lifestyle. It's yeah, but like, don't forget do that, I see, I see your point, but don't forget, this is a shoe brand. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. That started ready to wear in 2011 when Antoine Arnaud became the CEO, yeah. and he wanted to bring it more to a lifestyle brand. Yeah. So there's no heritage. There's, That's there's when no, he yeah. said, I've never been more free because at Dior, I had, mm. you know, Mr. Dior and, and Hedy and whatever, yeah. we know that happened, and here, he is completely free. So. I this believe, I don't know, maybe mm. the designer in the team can say, but I believe that's Chris's signature. 
free signature, isn't it? Mm. I mean, obviously, I've known Baluti for a long time, and I knew Olga Baluti a little bit, who was the kind of powerhouse that mm. set the brand up. Because it's all of, obviously all about shoes and the patina. And they're actually quite fancy shoes. I mean, it's always been a very luxurious brand. Everything they do is very high quality. And I remember just before LVMH invested in the brand, Olga would come and see me. And, you know, she'd be very passionate about the craft. Mm. But they didn't quite understand how to um, interpret clothing into the DNA and the ethos and the narrative. Well, it was definitely all of these looks, they're, they're, I mean, they, they're not statement pieces. They are in the fact that you... It, they're a statement itself because you want to... They're, they're, not, they're not shouting at you, they're not screaming. You want to have a conversation and spend time with this. Mm -hmm. I want to touch, I want to investigate, yeah. I want to look, I want to open up. It's I want safe. To, yeah. It was a very... It's his mm. first collection, I think, the word that comes across, it's safe. I mean, mm. any designer going into that brand would immediately understand it's about the shoes, but obviously, you know, to, to make sales and to please the commercial industry, they need to produce all this clothing. So working with the idea of the pattern and put it into clothing is kind of an obvious thing to do. Mm. I'm not being detrimental, it's just a factual thing. If a designer would look at and take a perspective, a holistic approach to what you would do with the brand, you would take the most identifiable signature up until now mm. was the pattern and coloration of the shoes yeah. and try and diffuse that into a whole collection. But, you know, Andrew, you can speak about that as a stylist. Yeah, I think even before you look at the collection, though, I think LVMH are looking for, like the same as the Burberry Group, are looking for somebody that has a connection to celebrity before you even start a collection. And, you know, Chris, over the past 15 years, has got a great list of clients that have worn his clothes, mm. from, you know, Ricky Martin to Timothy Chalamet to Remy Malik, like great people that have a presence in Hollywood that really like what Chris does and what he provides. And so that's a great starting point before you even get to design. Then the first collection he did was that pre-collection which they shot beautifully mm. in the factory, mm. which was such a great thing to shoot. And then shoot, nod to the artisan as well. To yeah, shoot yeah. the people in the factory making the shoes and then to have them in the background and stuff. I thought that was really beautiful. And it was a very safe, clean, precise collection. And then this, this is a great start. It's not groundbreaking by any means, but for the customer who's going to pay five, dollars $6,000 for a jacket, I think it, it's a great start. And the, it's, great. it's not just all black suits, which we could have expected. I really want to, I want Eric to say, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you um, why, because we come from the industry and you know we always expect something. I'm actually, more positive than you about this, and I will say why. Uh, but I would like to know someone who is the potential perfect clients of this. What, what did you think? What do you see? I, I actually really like the Im the, these images. I'm, I'm a big fan of all the, the jackets in particular, but I think there was a good point where I, I would really like to be able to, to feel touch. that, feel, touch, yeah, to touch them and feel the materials to, to have a better idea. For me, that's that's one of the most important things is is um, is being able to touch them and feel them and see what see what they feel like. Because I definitely want sense. to date this guy. I mean, whoever's wearing this is like a really you know it's sexy, it's chic, and like you're saying, you know, it's 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 so wonderful. So, to... do we expect from Berluti to be <coughs> groundbreaking? I mean, I, mean, I think people know that I'm going and people knew I was going to say this, but I think every brand has a sort of a role in fashion, that's exactly what Berluti's role is. Yeah, they don't want kook kooky bonkers sportswear, no. they don't want vetements, they don't want logos everywhere. It's even a very understated luxury. And, and Berluti, you know, I mean, it's, they, it's not Dior either. It's not... Mm. No, no, not at all. I think that Dior, Dior, that Dior customers, they know a name, they're thinking of something that's safe, you know, whereas this is something that you could take a little bit of a risk on but you're going to get beautifully crafted quality clothes. If they're anything, if they're made as beautiful as the shoes, it's going to be unbelievable. The skills that go into making a pair of shoes and the time that goes into it, that, that goes into these coats, would be fantastic. In I think it's becoming increasingly difficult for brands who have grown up from a launch of just one product, you know, the shoe, the bespoke shoe, um, to start to encompass this whole lifestyle world because I don't think there's, there's much more room. I think it's, uh, everything mm. is so open now that you have to make an impact straight away, as Andrew was saying. You know, Chris is doing this role because he brings a certain kind of person 
to the table. Mm -hmm. And you have to make a big splash. There's a lot of money that goes behind what they're doing. Yes. Enormous amount of Obviously. money. Yeah, and really all they have, there's no real heritage of the collection, so it only goes back six or seven years. All they have is the shoe. So how many variations on an idea around a shoe can you actually yeah. produce? It's actually very, very difficult. And I'm kind of pleased that, these, that some of these brands may not succeed. I don't mean that in a negative way. I just want people to start to push the boundary a little bit more. Mm. As I said, it's, it it's safe, sense. and I like Chris, and I'm a minimalist too, mm. obviously, yeah. <laughs> and I understand that aesthetic. But I think now, in this day and age, where a creative person has to be all-encompassing and needs to understand every discipline, that they could have gone much, much, much further. Mm. We saw this craft fashion thing with... Um, with who's the woman from Valentino that went to that house? Maria. Maria Chiara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she, she did this, and everyone's sort of pushing Maria, contemporary Maria artistic Gracia values yeah, with the idea of craft. It's become a trend in fashion. And I just think now is the time to go further. Look at the last two days and the shows that have been coming up. We've mm. gone everywhere. Well, from, yeah, it's been very much into tailoring. But my question for you, and maybe for Eric more than anybody else, why would someone go now to Belluti instead of Xenia for classic with a modern twist tailoring? So, oh, Eric, would you buy it? Have you bought anything before from this brand? No, I don't own anything from Did Belluti. Did you know the brand no. before? A little bit. Yeah, I knew a little bit about it. That's really As I said before, some of the... I would definitely buy some of the, some of the jackets. I'm a big yeah. fan of some of them. Yeah. So where from do you buy point, From a shoe point of view, I don't, uh, because, I don't really know much. So they've only got 50 <coughs> stores worldwide. Yeah, yeah but they're yeah, like yeah. A, a close to 200,000 euros brand and yeah. official yeah. Um, data. But I mean, it's, it's a medium brand. Yeah, so it's kind of like it's more. Modern, yeah. And as Carla was saying, there's only so many shoes that you can sell to, yeah. you know, um, especially men's shoes. Mm. But yeah. I think the story around it, one being one piece of leather, is, yeah, what did you know? know of the brand is it? yeah not a lot not a lot to be yeah. honest um i i, I knew chris van ash from before actually because of from just from Dior. a belgian friend and he spoke he spoke very highly of him um we, we've spoken quite a bit about the belgian designers because mm. uh, a, a belgian friend who's very interested in it and has an, a brand of him uh, his own brand in belgium a smaller one, so um, I knew a little bit about him, and I like him. Just I'm I'm a minimalist as well, so yeah. I like I like uh, minimalism. But um, so I didn't really know much about Baluti, just just about the just about the designer himself. That's what I think is interesting. Like that's the space for it, right? You know, if you if you want you want to make a statement, you want to have a conversation with fashion as an individual. This is perhaps this is stepping into the brand that's the the more quiet, refined date mm -hmm. night moment. Strong outerwear. Yeah. Do you guys in the dressing room or just out? Do you, do you talk about design? Do footballers talk about design in the modern age? Can you talk about it, Eric? Or uh, yeah, I can talk about it a little bit. What to say today? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm free. I'm free. He's, he's in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm in it now. Yeah. Do you talk about fashion in these yeah. terms? Is it all about sports? No, clothes? no. We talk. We talk. We talk quite a bit about it. There's lots of people that are very interested in it. More, some more than others. Um, like these. These looks here. They're not very, uh, they're not seen a lot in fo uh, from a, uh, a footballer, I don't think, would be wearing these these kind of looks a lot. Maybe, as I said before, some of the jackets, because I think there's there's a bit more about the jackets, which yeah. some and of them would like. you can around a little bit more. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Where do you the, buy your former wear? Kilgore, actually, as well. I've done, there I've you done go. my suits, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, shame, shame I don't own it anymore, Eric. I know. <laughs> years, years ago, um, I think it was about 2004, 2005, and Andrew might have even worked for the magazine, two footballers did a fashion magazine called Icon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie Redknapp and Tim Sherwood. You won't okay. know it before your time. Yeah. And it was a fashion lifestyle magazine that only was sent to football players. Did you start for it, Andrew, ever? Or I, I didn't. No, no, no. I was right? really interested in it, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was, you know, it was cars and big watches and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. But they tried to do something at a time when, you know, it just sports people weren't ready to engage in... It wasn't really fashion. It was kind of more culture yeah. at that time. Can we and find it last a few seasons, you know, I think they did three yeah. or four years, maybe 12 issues, and then it, it stopped completely. But it was just a little bit early, and that was kind of an interesting time. Because obviously the sports, mm. the big sports brands now, and everyone's wearing sportswear. I mean, fashion is essentially sportswear for the future. Nike and Adidas, they wouldn't dream of approaching yeah, actors before sports stars. You go mm. to the sports and then the athletes first. Yeah. You're healthy, you look good, you do something that's... But, kind of active, yeah, but then what happened then? Because when you have the terms of agreement, you have to pay them. That's when they went to the entertainment and marketing industry. Yeah. 
the is one. Yeah. Yeah. The red one you were talking about. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. How have you done that? Who's done that? <laughs> Listen, the magic of show studio. Yeah. It's that internet thing that the kids do. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Surfing I can't, the yeah. web. Yeah, like Arctic Monkeys. What issue is that? Can you see what issue that is? My friend John Colville used to rant on about this all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, really, yeah. Isn't it? Oh, Neil Bedford shot that. That's yeah. right, yeah. Indeed, there. But anyway, so I'm yeah. That's right, it was nil. So that was kind of like an interesting time, but it never seemed to... I just think it was a little bit early. But why did everyone uh, turn to sportswear? Why did that happen? Comforts, fit for purpose. I mean, I did a whole... I know you're going to discuss me, <laughs> No, no, I think... I mean, I, I, think, I think it was more the shift in society that was... that came in fashion especially, that came from the digital, where the grassroots had, had something to say, and I welcome it because it was yeah. very good. It was more bottom-up that, it's you know, a, dictated yeah. by, by above. And so then the designers, the new designer came up and said, OK, I'm going to give you what you want. And so mm. now the power is to the kids. And the kids, you know, but now if I see another hoodie with that cost a thousand pounds, I'm mm. like, you know what I mean. <laughs> and there is a little bit of fatigue of that yeah. because from London, believe it or not, to now here, we've seen a shift toward tailoring and modern formality mm. and modern luxury again, which was probably needed to but, yeah, push things I, forward. I think London specifically, it's a small bird, a really fast heartbeat, things happen. It's almost like the content loop is smaller here. And exactly what you were saying, the rise of streetwear, because that content loop, because of the digital sphere we're now in, people, you know, people wanted to have a conversation, a creative, cultural conversation about art, fashion, design, and all the nuances within everything it. Is more I be, I everything is more open. I want to be a part of this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But if I, if I, you know, first, uh, my first project in Brand Squire, we were doing tailoring, modern slimline tailoring in 1991, 92, as, mm. as Andrew will remember. I hope you used some of it in styling, Andrew. Mm. Yes. And um, we, you couldn't have a chunky trainer from Adidas like this. It'd have to be slim, because the silhouette would be a slim, narrow mm. silhouette. So, and as I said, in the last 10, 15 years, especially in the last five years, last few seasons, men's was just gone like that. Now you can do anything. You can almost um, turn up in period costume and put a yeah. pair well, of trainers But also, but also you look individual, let's face right? it, there was even, 10 years ago, a man that was having a facial or caring about their fashion was either gay or called what they were calling the straight men. They were doing that love. Metrosexual. Metrosexual, you know, mm. it was like ridiculous. Now, <laughs> everybody cares about what they put on their yeah, Because back. everyone has Which a... Finally, you yeah, know, yeah. men are allowed to be fashionable yeah. without being put in a, in a cage. And that's because everyone Whatever has... Whatever the cage yeah. is. So, like image. Yeah. And hence yeah. the growth economically, I mean financially, of men's. I mean, men's fashion in the books of the fashion houses has grown faster than women's in the past mm. years. Yeah, it works. And that's yeah. why there has been this, you know, putting big names into like, you know, the, the Kim Jones and the Virgil Abloh with, mm. with opportunistic or not interest by, by the brands, but they invest a lot in men's mm. because it's the new frontier. But Lutie, I mean, it's when I, and I was, you know, I was talking to them about position a few years ago before I tried to retire from fashion. And, you know, the customer for such a long time has been a successful businessman, you know, based in a particular part of Europe or Asia. And obviously, you know, they have to grow, they have to make money. I've always said that I don't, I'm very uncomfortable that creativity and art sits with, with business because I think the two are just so far away from each other. And brands like Baluti were uh, considered as, you know, slightly naff. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I'm not talking about pre-2011. I'm, talk I'm talking about, sorry, pre-2011. Mm -hmm. They were a little bit flash. You know, the burnishing that was happening in the shoe was also uh, went hand in hand with all this embroidery they were doing. And there was no ethos or narrative no. or, or, or thought about why they were putting that stitching on there. They yeah, just yeah, cut no, it the got shoe. a bit. They were it's tattooing leather yeah. and it was all a bit. It's too much. Tattooing no. leather, how long ago? It was like they were chasing that Von Dutch customer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, again, this idea of these big corporations like LVMH wanting to have all these brands in their stable being very successful and still being credible and cool and selling to young people. Mm. It's not well, going to happen. But that's, what I'm, that's my next question. So this is probably the jewel in the crown of LVMH as far as luxury for men, right? Yeah. It's maybe even more than Dior. You know, it's like yeah. what shouts luxury and craftsmanship and artisan, mm. etc. Yeah. But 
is this cool? I mean, apart from the fact that I like it or not, can this compete with the Virgils and the Kim but this within is, the same group? This is chasing that Hermes dollar, isn't it? That's what they want to be. They want, they want to be Hermes. And, Hermes you know, is big. Do, yeah. do we sit and look no. at Hermes and think, is Hermes cool? I wouldn't go to an Hermes show and think an Hermes show is cool but when you break it down the pieces are beautiful yeah when you go in the showroom and look at stuff you touch the cloths and stuff it's fantastic yeah, it's you unbelievable this is you feel that when you mean. wear it and yeah. when you get to a certain age you know you want something that feels nice on the body do you know what i mean that's a bit comfortable yeah but why do you have to say that's my point does it have to be for a certain age. I think I mean, it's less again, about a certain age. It's not yeah. a certain age. <laughs> I feel so, like it's that moment of feeling, you know, like when you put something on and, it, and it's tailored specifically, you, you understand that. I think the conversation narrative around 50 hours, one piece of leather to make a shoe, like the, the, the craft and the man hours that have gone into that, you take that up, you put the jacket on. I feel like at any point in your, I mean, obviously an older man might dress like, as, like this more, or woman, but having that jacket, the outerwear, the, what you were saying about, you'll put that on, you'll feel fucking, you'll feel very I expensive. Could see, I could see feel... Chamolet at the Oscars with that. Yes, of course. I could see me man. in it, you know. Yeah, but it's not an older man, it's because yeah, it's exactly. an older man. Yeah, I think, I think older, an older individual would, would probably be, be more comfortable in this. I don't think he would wear pink, you put... an older individual. Yeah, maybe not. That's where a they're Dutch trying one. to, yeah. that's probably where they're trying to attract a younger audience is still mm. enough, that's my point. Well, I don't think they're going to do with this. Uh, I just want to make a point about craft. A craft originally in all the bespoke houses, whether it's uh, tailoring, which obviously I was associated with, or, or shoes or uh, you know, saddles, whatever it is, is about making something that is um, specific for a customer's requirements. That's what bespoke means, made to your own yeah. um, measures and ideals. And usually with clothing, you know, it's people that um, weren't the perfect body, and you'd have to make something... <laughs> That's kind. <laughs> I don't have to say it nicely. Yeah. What can we do with this? <laughs> and it's the same with shoes. You, know, you don't go into a standard shoe, and the craft and the time required to make something out of the norm, you know, away from ready-to-wear, was what you were paying for. And now that's been, in the last 10, 15 years, been completely turned on its head, and it's like luxury is about this money, all this money being spent on the quality of the material, but not the quality of the craftsmanship. But these aren't bespoke, they're luxury, right? They're not. What, are the, what is luxury? Well, that's a massive question. We could, we could, do, we could do a 10-hour... <laughs> Let's do it every 30 ten, seconds. For, yeah, we could do actually a 12-hour a day for at least a month and a half on that. What is luxury? Is luxury relevant to a young person? That's a good point. An aspiration, well, aspirational luxury none of lifestyle. Us, which yeah, none of us mentioned those biker trousers. And that's when I feel that Chris wanted to put in something... A the big gold street. wheel, the so, motocross wheel. Was there? Yeah. There's it's a big a motocross big gold do. wheel in the middle. It's a motocross pant that's yeah, linked it's a to biker. some motocross it's shoe a that Olga did, yeah. I think. Oh, so it's a, a very so dubious is, reference. Isn't that a bit silly? It's an archive. Can you get the wheel up? The what big gold I wheel. I don't want yeah. to. No, can you explain it's it? A, it yeah. The connection is the, uh, the, there's a shoe in the archive, I think, that was motocross or biker or... There's a connection to that. Sport. There's that massive wheel. Oh, I see. Yeah. The thing is, that Chris, I didn't know it was a shoe that was a biker shoe. It was a biker motocross. shoe or a, mo a motocross shoe, I think. I, read I didn't somewhere. read it anywhere. But there's some conversations around like that nod to like masculine, like this kind of man is motocross. Like what does I don't I, I didn't enjoy that Come part on. of it. Is that <laughs> I think they're quite homoerotic <laughs> those trousers, you know. I don't think they're kind of like motocross guy. They could be a bit tighter, maybe. Yeah, they're, they're a bit more bottomless. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Chris is obviously a super competent creative director, and let's put into perspective what a creative director must do within the yeah, It's not just clothes. Of a house like this. <laughs> it's yeah. the logo. It's, it's Alison McClellan shooting the campaign. Everything. It's, you know... They have redone the, the logo. Right boy. They have read, he has redesigned yeah. the logo. Yeah. Um, but, you know... I and mean, I think the imagery that went with the new collection is brilliant. It's really simple, you know, it's, you know, a young guy looking mm. cool in a suit, a clean, white yeah. backdrop, it's not going to scare anybody, it's not kooky bonkers, Loewe, it's, you know... Would you oh. wear the leather hoodie? Why, so, hold on, why hold on. do they... Why hold on, do, hold on, hold on, sorry. No, I just want to know, like, why do they want to try and attract a different audience? Why don't they embrace... Um, what it is. Such a good point you just made. Ma Why? Mahani. I don't know what it is yet. Mahani. 
because probably Great. it's hard to go above. So the, yeah, but again, you know, but I, I think I, you said you've got a pair of shoes by Baluti, they're a thousand pounds. Do you need another pair? You know, but like, I worked mm. in this big corporation, mostly all of them before, okay? And I can tell you, when I was at the time already saying, not every brand has to have one billion revenues. It's not, you know, mm. some brands, that's not their, not objective, that's not their, their, their yeah, that's not why they're there. I remember yeah. when I was in Karen, that was called Gucci Group at the time, I was saying that about Balenciaga. Balenciaga doesn't need to be a billion. Balenciaga is niche. Balenciaga is bringing fashion forward, you know, and so I don't think Berluti should be a, a you know, a, a Bohemoth, shouldn't be, but that's probably what they want, and so they, they yeah. want to attract the newer. That, He's just thinking about the dollars. <laughs> yeah, they want to <laughs> but, then, there, yeah. the but dollars. then you risk to dilute. More shoes, more clothes, more dollars. Yeah, but this is the great dichotomy. You know, they're trying to attract a younger customer, and as soon as the younger customer feels that it's about business and money, they're not going to be interested because that's not cool. Yeah. Young customers oh, they don't care. Well, I think well, what kind of younger customer? Well, someone perhaps is about, you know, signs and signifiers of wealth. I've got a jacket on which is, you know, 7K. My shoes are one and a half K. But will they know the jackets from Baluti? Exactly. That's a good point. Because well, maybe that's the thing. It's that's about not being it's the so knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing well, well, but that's, you know, with a lot of publicity and with the money behind, you can make it known. What mm. I wonder is that there is a is that slice the right way of... to do it? No, but there is a slice of Xenia to be taken. They're, they're, several billions brands, so, you know, it's, yes. just, mm. there's a big, I mean, China is all about tailoring, yeah. even in the end, so we can't only think about the street of short. Well, the Xenia yeah. creative director was at Baluti before. Yeah, it's, yeah and, and he was at Xenia before. So, so why yeah. can he make it, why can Alessandro make Baluti work? Because he obviously had the funds. No, 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 Alessandro left because Xenia, they called him back. I don't think Belluti got rid of Alessandro. How many years did he do at Belluti? Four Five. years. Now, I wasn't suggesting they got rid of him. No, but what Why I'm saying, want to go? it's been a long time to see Zenia before, and then he went to Belluti. It's like an old lover. Zenia called him back and he said, we give you the group. You've got this in your mind. People yeah, move around a lot at LVMH, and there's a reason for that. No, but I he think. has a much bigger... <laughs> Andrew, tell us. <laughs> no, I think yeah. it's not the most Andrew. easiest place to have, you know, to... Today. Yeah, but Andrew, he has a much bigger job now. Yeah, 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 no definitely. He's the creative director of the Xenia Group. Mm. So all the brands, whatever. So he has a much bigger job. So he knows where that, yeah. And, and for men's, classic men's designer, probably Xenia is the place to be. Yeah. A bit boring, but, you know. I liked this, though. <laughs> I thought this was So cool. what are we seeing? What are we looking at? 2014. Eric, in terms of football, I mean, the culture towards when you're talking about fashion just in general terms, you know, when you guys are just talking about it, yeah. is it always, is it more sportswear? And is it the trainer still? Is that the focus? Young guys between 20 and... Yeah, you, you, obviously trainers are, footwear in general, I think is, is, huge, in, is huge in football. Um, it's not, but it's not just footwear. It is more sportswear, I think. It, a lot more, not just sportwear, streetwear, you know, mm. I wouldn't, classify this as that kind of thing. Um, and do you want guys want comfort? Or do you want a style or a look? Or a I logo. A, a logo. Yeah, I think that, that's my mm. biggest... Um, you're not that's wearing my it. biggest problem. Because uh, I'm, I'm really anti-logo. Anti my logo. thing's never had yeah. logos. Yeah, so I don't... Um, but I think the youth in general are all about the yoga logo. I, I think yeah. they all want to... They don't want to be wearing something where someone has to ask them or know what it is. They want to be showing what people, it what it is. Yeah. Do you have to That's wear... an insecurity. Is that an insecurity? Sorry, what I find yeah, is like yeah. the materials as well, uh, the the quality of the materials and the fabrics, is 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 so much worse because of it. Because people can just the big brands, they can just slap a logo on it, mm. and it's they can sell it for as much price. as they want yeah. just, just because what... of that. And so people aren't the really taking. Doesn't matter? To the young customer, I, to the young customer, I don't think they're paying as much attention to the material as they are. What what uh, it how what branded. how it's branded mm. and and not just that but who else is who else is wearing it? Yeah, and what you said like how would you know who this is? Exactly for a young yeah. person, that's what yeah. they want. They want people to know what they're wearing and, mm. and how much. They almost want a price tag shown so on kind, it. Kind of you know he's done this staining which the patina which you can you can see it looks a little bit like meat. 
on some of the jackets. It's quite like, <laughs> like Georgie nice. said yeah. it in the review, it's a bit meaty. Did she? Yeah. She said exactly it, the same. I felt like it was um, some of the colours, it felt like it a little bit... like wood to me, wood, more yeah. than meat. I think some of the later on ones, are, yeah, but I mean, this looks the like... The first a look, look yeah. number one is the, the suit, the whole suit. I've heard, yeah. I've heard you can go to look number one. Okay, you're Richard Sarabot, yeah. That yeah. would be more cop right? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say as well, do you guys have it to wear It looks like wood to me. I got, wood. I got meat. Oh, you got meat, yeah. okay. Mm, I'm going um, to stick with Richard Serra, the artist. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eric, do you guys have to wear a suit match day? Uh, we do for some games, just, just a few. How do they choose? How do they, how do they it's choose? A, it's, a, it's a sponsor, so... It's a uniform. Oh, yeah, so we, we all have to wear the same. And as athletes, are you comfortable in a tailored suit before you go to a game, before you prepare? Yeah, we... I, I personally... Lots of, lots, of the, lots of the boys that I'm, I'm with, they, they like it. They like it. They feel like... Dressing they're up. Going to, Grown up. To a business, they're going to a job, you know, mm. by wearing a suit, it's which is perception. quite... perception. That's which is quite saying, nice. Yeah, yeah I yeah. quite enjoy wearing a suit to the game because you, you really feel like you're going there to do something, yeah. which is quite, quite a nice feeling. Does it lessen it in a tracksuit? If you're in a tracksuit, does it lessen it, even at your level? No, it doesn't lessen it. There's just, there's, it's more, it, it, I guess because we don't wear it a lot, it's more, it's more unique when we do wear it. Um, that, that could just be the reason, the reason for that feeling. But um, yeah, it, 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 it's, it, I like it because it, it gives me that feeling that I'm going there so to do a job. It's professional and it's yeah. giving off a certain... But as you said, it's, you said before about time and nowadays the young people really want to be spending you know, hours going to do one fitting, two fitting, three fittings or they want things that are, are ready. You know, ready. You, know, you can even order them online, get them, put them on in a day. Do they want to be spending the time to to go somewhere and get something tailored two or three times? Well, this is ready to wear, but again, you know, like someone was telling me in another panel, it's very hard to buy very well-fitting ready-to-wear online. And probably Carlo helped me out mm. here. You know, it's, you really want to go, even if it's ready-made, you really want to go and try your perfect size. You know, some mm. will say to you, well, maybe you need a little bit more. get me started on online sales for time, <laughs> I just think it's, it's still insane. But I think you... See, but, 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 okay, you, because you come from that tailoring thing, but... No, the experience is yeah, so sterile. What's let's Eric, put Eric's it into perspective. About. It's happening, and it's happened more and more. So Doesn't mean it's how right. do this brand succeed in that? Well, if you're a brand that your heritage and your culture and your nature has grown up doing something by hand, which is to do with an experience, then as a creative director, that's what I, was fo I, I would focus on. Yeah. I would focus on experiences. And process. Either, yeah. And process. Yeah. Yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah, Regarding the show. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't play the game. I wouldn't do this. You know, this is all very nice. You can't fault it. And I said, I like Chris too a lot. But, you know, you have to find ways of um, breaking new ground by using your heritage because the answers will always be there. It's just... It's menswear is so restricted, has been very restricted for many, many years, whereas women's wear was always a kind of an open book, you could do this, you could do whatever you like. So me the menswear mentality has been, we have to do this, there have to be suits, there have to be jackets, so on and so forth, and Baluti falls into that category. You will expect certain things. If Chris had just put together a collection from his heart and he was thinking about the sensibility of the world at this moment, he'd probably drape everybody in natural coloured linen. It'd be completely different sensibility. So his hands are tied. Yeah. Are they? Yeah, oh, of course, regardless of what he's saying. Mm. Well, I know I've, I've been in these situations. Okay, I know, I know. Mm. Okay, that's interesting, guys. We have some insight. You <laughs> were interviewed for this job, right? Uh, before, as Alessandro was leaving, they were looking for a new creative director. And I was approached by many people for the role. I was on the shortlist, yeah, although I was never actually custom. interviewed by LVMH. I was on the shortlist with Ida, another designer, which it would be unfair to name. What, what were you? What were you? Uh, what, what, what did you feel they was they were expecting? What they were looking for? Well, in 2015, I was just doing my second stint at Kilgar, and I'd made it much more tailoring and the idea of menswear brand and mixing it with you know more artistic sensibilities. It just looks contemporary, mm -hmm. and you know I'd had the connections with them before, so I think they were looking for somebody that could. Um, put across the classic DNA of a brand, but make it 
slightly more interesting and associated to, to, more, to more cultural activity, whether it be mm. art or sculpture or, or things of this nature. So they wanted culture and sophistication, but they needed it to be new. But the thing is, Baluti, that was never going to happen. It was impossible because you're so shackled by your past and the nature of your craft. As Andrew said very perceptively earlier, oh, and, and Eric as well, um, what about just keeping the old customer? Why bother appealing to the young mm. customer? Why not keep and sell to that customer that's always paid X thousands? You said that, the and that's why I didn't mm. get the job. No, I never got <laughs> to the interview. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. No, I didn't get to the interview because I keep getting these people kept calling me and saying, you know, you're on this list, and you know, and I say, well, when are they going to interview me? And those those jobs for those creative roles work much in the same way that all headhunters work, and I'm sure in the football world too. People will know all about you, and they will research you, and they know mm. they're looking for a certain type of character to fulfill a certain type of role, regardless of what your um, artistic or creative temperament is. They don't actually care if they can engage with you. They just want you to do this. Mm. And I think either because of his women's wear heritage too, there could have been a large potential for Baluti to branch into I think wear. I don't think they were expecting, they didn't hire Hyder to stay. I think this is what I think that happened, but you know, knowing a little bit from inside the group, <gasps> that they, they knew they wanted Chris, but they needed a year or whatever it was, like yeah, everything to, around, to yeah. make it work, to have, to sign Kim for Dior and then to yeah. re-sign Chris for that, and they needed someone. And so it was easier to have Hyder, who was already in Paris, and you know. Yeah, he was French, and he was already there. Moving you there. So I, I think so, and I think that's when we can have a whole panel of me thinking how designers are today commodities, and they're used like little things when they need it. But maybe I'm wrong. But we are. But I think that's what yeah. they did to Hyder, yeah. and, and you know, whatever. Luckily, he has his own job, and you know, he, he has a brand. But so they couldn't hire you because you would have had to leave a job and be more... I would have taken the millions for you. I know. Well, <laughs> yeah, but now you would probably will. be here. <laughs> yeah. Fun the art side. Mm -hmm. I think Chris is there to say. He's oh. part of the LVMH family. He's been many years. Yeah. He didn't do anything groundbreaking at Dior probably, but he didn't destroy the brand either. Mm. I think he's a good one and probably easy to manage. I don't know. Right. I don't know him personally. I think he is. And he's not been outside a cafe, and he's not been racist, and he's not been caught on camera. Yeah. Or, hint, hint. You know, like, so, you know, he's a very safe, well-behaved designer that mm. kind of delivers. So I was going to say, like, how do you, coming back to this like, idea of like, how do you communicate a brand message, with the, the issues with online, and the, as you said, like, the dichotomy between those two realities, IRL, URL, how do they match up? We have this kind of connective activity, creative, cultural connected activity, which is the World Wide Web, Instagram, all these different platforms and profiles, and we're all communicating on it. How do you think this brand can deliver this idea, concept, and tangibility of craft and artisan. How do you think they can communicate it? Because you have to touch you, it, You right? mean with success? Yeah, with success. They it's won't like, be able yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, because I think that's a conundrum. Well, it's well like, I mean, don't, you... don't forget, buyers will go to the showroom, will touch the clothes, and maybe some unexpected retailer will fall in love with it, and they will say, oh, I prefer uh, Chris's uh, pink coat than we've seen yeah. like 10. But on, 10 Instagram, brands. on Instagram, with no logo, how do you know it's them? Yeah, but what about the others? Apart what about from the other? one or two that have a specific cut? Yeah. I mean, so do, you like, remember do you remember uh, Dries the other day? Or um, I want to quote someone else and it doesn't come. I mean, or Xenia in yeah. Milan, or, you know, probably, probably. But I feel rough. like. But I feel like that can and, and, yeah. and, and orange I would recognize. And that you want to get, it's not it's like, like was that your I think like more the... art. So, you know, the art world operates in very specific ways, mm. you know, linked to credibility and time. And as you say, mm. you know, gallery versus collectors versus uh, these kind of subjects. Mm. Whereas fashion, and particularly menswear fashion, if we take a very long term perspective, hasn't been very credible for very long. Mm. You know, when I started, you know, <laughs> Say you're a menswear fashion designer, you know, people would still smirk. Yeah. In the early nights, right, Andrew? Yeah. Remember how hard it was. Say you were a Not DJ now. and you were in. And you were in. <laughs> so, this whole credibility of, you know, I've, always, I've said this before, you take this little pyramid of creativity, you have artists at the top, you finally go down, architects, and you get down to menswear designer, probably right at the very bottom, up until the last few years. So, this idea of word of mouth, 
through um, intelligence and great work, reputation mm. of the artist has never happened. It was more. It was more that I think there's a real. There's a real asset there, and the fact that you are talking about the not just the materials, but the the, the element of time within the process. Like, is it? Like, I'm just more interested in the fact that is it something that perhaps within the communication of the brand it will be about like you, we've all seen a shoe in the or reference to the as we've got the reference to the table and the marble and the marks. But, you know, is it the not like, oh, okay, let's go, you know, the catwalk in the showroom. You want that like, one image that stops you dead in your tracks. Yeah, because I've seen think, it continuously. I, I get your point, yeah, yeah. but I'm not sure that these brands will succeed for mm. that. Yeah. They will probably have some ambassadors that may, maybe they, now they, maybe you get a phone call. Yeah, they have free They will probably have some people that are yeah. appealing because they're younger, they're fresher, mm. or they're older and gorgeous, I don't know. Mm. But I do not think that this brand We'll, maybe they do care, but I don't think Instagram is as important for them as no, the virgins that we talk. Yeah. No, they you, will have to do it, but point. it's going but to be a different. Different. His connections with They are already doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. But on their Instagram, sorry, Andrew. No, it's okay. finished. On yeah. their Instagram account now, if you look now, you know, yeah. which I looked today for the first time in three years, the first little category under stories is the word celebrities. Yeah. yeah. It's not product. That's what I just said. Yeah. yeah. That's what they will have to aim at. But the invite was a big block of wood that was... And it's a very beautiful shivered. product, but it's oh. close. You know, that's the, the, it's oh. just... I mean, I think, oh, yeah, reading exactly. in between the lines again with Leanne, I think every brand now, every, the communication, you know, PR is just a visual image now. That's mm. what it is. It's not yeah. about talking, unfortunately. Yeah, so you need this one killer image that will make a fantastic impact. A very recent example... Hold on, let me just give the example. A very good example of a shoe company that did this in the last six months was Adidas. And Stan Smith, the originator of the shoe, came to London, and as part of the presentation when he was speaking, Adidas made him a giant shoe that was like yeah. size 50. It was fantastic. This little dwarf man, did you yeah. see it, Andrew, with this giant white Stan Smith. And regardless of whether you knew about Stan Smith or not, I don't know if you saw it, did you, Eric? No. Did you see no. it there? No, no. You know, this, it was a very simple idea, just an nice. oversized shoe from this trainer company. Out of everything they could have done, they could have got every star in the world behind it. They thought, no, just put Stan Smith in this giant well, white shoe. And they relaunched Stan Smith with a beautiful black and white campaign with about 10 stars talking about their first Stan Smith. So, they did both. Yeah. But also, but I didn't look what at I that. wanted to say when you say they're interrupt rightly, I said, and yet, what did Berluti do before the first show of Chris Van Asch? Three classic PR stunts. Um, the FT, WWD, and Vogue interview with it Luke, happen, uh, yeah. Alexander, Fury, and I don't remember who, uh, WWD. Vogue. Yeah. And uh, no, it was Luke Leach, I think. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, but doesn't matter. But they did the three titles that 15 years ago my bosses would have asked me to do. So, you know, it's like, do they want to be modern or not? No, did but they, the, Stan, Stan Smith was much more modern. There were some crusties at the top. I know. I know. Not, That's why I'm the, saying the this. Two, but I they, know. You know. So but, you have to be in the FT. You have to be. I'm not saying yeah. it's wrong. I no, read them all and no. I understood a lot. Yeah. But they didn't do an Instagram campaign. They went to WWD, Vogue, mm. and yeah. FT. So, and probably none of our listeners read them because they, that's not what they do. Mm. And those are the people they were trying to cater to. So, But I think that every, regardless of the area of the market that you're in, if you participate in these fashion weeks, and I'm talking very generically now, um, you are judged by the media on the same playing field, whether you have £50,000 to spend for your presentation or £10 million. Are you? Yeah, of course, the media will judge you. Because they'll look at your collection. Is the collection any good? Is what they're saying interesting? You're usually better when you have 10 million. That's, the critiques are softer. Debatable. Trust me. If it's a good idea, it's a good idea, right? You know, it's not a level playing field to start with. If it's with. a good idea, but if it's a bad idea, it's yeah. less of a well, bad idea. You can idea. spend 10 million, as they usually do, and produce bad ideas. We've oh, seen yeah. it many, many times. Couldn't yeah. agree more. But how many times, Andrew, have you seen a young designer with no money suddenly come up with something really interesting that moves you? as yeah. opposed to a 10, five million pound show. But the media do judge all these designers with the same frame of reference. It's like, oh, they're doing Fashion Week. This is a good show, this is not a good show. How many shows in the past, it's got better recently, just have had no coverage because the young designers can't call a PR, can't even afford to pay a PR or get that kind of coverage. And I know because I've suffered yeah. you know, those yeah, I, I hear you many, many times. So this whole idea of communication and how the industry is set up and how it moves forward is kind of interesting. I think Belutia are going to be caught right in the middle of that. 
actually. Yeah. As you say, they went to mm. three... Reading in between the lines, Mimi, you think that the three interviews that they did were too classic. You thought they should have gone to it, they should have spoken no, to both 32C? No, no I don't, I'm not judging those interviews. They were with very good writers in very good media outlets. I think if you're trying to cater to a new audience, target, read younger, the one that love um, sportswear but also need the, that suit to go to the wedding of their s older sister. But they're relying on Instagram for that. Robert, that's yeah, their young box too. It's and then yeah, but the old probably streams. you don't... Yeah, but I don't think they really want that because otherwise the strategy is wrong of the PR strategy I'm talking. Yeah. Mm, because who read that? The industry and LVMH cares about yeah. the industry yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. And some older people like me they still read paper you know mm, what i mean yeah, yeah no, i understand uh, eric if we were if we were to set you loose on this collection and you're designing the Valuti collection oh. next season <laughs> you know fresh with your eyes knowing what you want i mean how yeah. are you? as a consumer it would be terrible you're, you're in your 20s still 25 yeah yeah what would you do i don't want to put you on the spot you know we said we wouldn't put you on the spot yeah i know <laughs> we um, did <laughs> i mean would it be more sports would you just look no, for? no i'd take it back I take it back to its origins, I think. Oh, so shoes only? Yeah, it, I, I was saying, yeah, I guess shoes only if it's, of course, to, you said to me 2011 when they started with clothes. Yeah. So I would take it back to shoes only. And if I did clothes, I would, you, the, up there before there was the 2014, I think, mm. collection of clothes. And I think that was more succinct. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be having these, these colors. <laughs> yeah. I'd, that, when I think Monochrome. of Baluti, I think more that kind of... Mm. Monochrome palette. That classic. Kind of thing. Classic look, yeah. yeah. Not that. So you prefer yeah. that for Baluti? I prefer that mm. for Baluti, yeah. So super, super classic, something that you, know, you could trust, you knew what you were getting when you went there. That somehow kind of gives a message of more credibility. Yeah, I, I prefer things that... We were talking about the Stan Smith, like the, the, the Stan Smith, like a, a timeless piece. It is, it is what it is, and mm. it's not trying to be anything else. And I prefer brands that are like that. Any kind of brand, doesn't have to be a, a clothing brand. Any brand that, that just tries to be what it is and doesn't try to you know, force itself into something else or pretend to be something else. I'm not, I'm not saying they shouldn't um, try and be more creative and try and you know, con constantly improve. It's just, just stay, stay in your true to yourself. True to yeah. yourself Pure, yeah. You're talking then, about purity as well, yeah. aren't you? But yeah. then also, if, if there wasn't all the different iterations of, of design and like within the one brand, then you wouldn't have such a. It's going back to the, I'm talking about old loves again, but it's going back to the you know you try on all the different slippers and you go back to the one that you know feels more comfortable or you have the more emotive relationship with. If there wasn't all the different iterations of trainer design, then you wouldn't go back to the. But so my question is, wonderful. Does um, the world theme? need another brand that gives you a modern take on tailoring? Depends does, how you yeah. do it. But does a brand, does a does a consumer need more than one pair of a you know, shoes, because that's all they were doing prior to it's that, It's good to right? have the yeah. choice, I think, yes. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We do need one. Yeah, but how much, choice, how, much choice, <laughs> how much do you need? I mean, you can't, um, there is no, you know, people can spend their means however they wish. If you decide you don't want to eat and you'd rather 100 pairs of shoes, then, you know, that's what... Well, these doing. crazy coloured suits, there's a reason. The reason is it's a red carpet suit. It's a guy on the red carpet wearing mm. a suit, and it highlights the name Baluti, and everyone on their phones sees an Instagram feed and Baluti comes up. And mm. then you click on Baluti and you realise that they make shoes and they don't just make a bright pink suit. Yeah. And that's how you draw in a new customer. Yeah, yeah, it's and the logo it. in itself. It's yeah. just a really simple marketing thing. He's yeah. there to make brightly coloured suits that look a bit like the shoes. That's it. Mm. it it's almost like a PR you budget. Should it. It. Feeds in. Make it, make it. It. Feeds in. Yeah, yeah, I think it should end it here. Yeah, yeah. I just want to know, I want to end on this, uh, that women's look, which are really pretty. I mean, I would, they're totally up my aisle. I would totally wear that, but would I go to Berluti to buy my next suit, you know? Mm. Um, what, do you think they're going to enter the 
women's territory? I think they just have Seriously, to. Seriously? They, they just have to put it in there. I, I think like they will do it. I think they'll get some great women's ambassadors that wear it. There'll be an actress that will have a following, you know, and then people will buy into so it. Again, they can PR. afford it. It's, P mm. it's PR. They can afford it. This show it. Is, the is a PR budget, right? They can write it off as a PR budget. It's, you know, mm. And then sell 75% of shoes. Yeah, and then increase yeah. the number of shoes they sell because they brought in new customers all from a red carpet experience. And I, I did enjoy the nod to the shoe. I, all, the majority of the trousers had the zip up. That's yeah. when it starts from the shoes up. Yeah. But I think I'm that not was... that convinced that in Mr. Arnaud's head, this is a PR thing. I think it will Probably. work. I would think it will it's work. It's not like we don't wear. It's so big. The no, no, no. Size. But it's it's, yeah. it's a PR the... thing to drag in a new consumer, which makes. But they money. do want to sell. Yeah, Bernard loves yeah. the dollar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trust me, I've bought. He's there money. counting. And them I think, now. yeah, and I think in you know it's something when you're when you are design, you 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 make in that way, almost like it's like an almost an involuntary motion, right? You're gonna put that that color and you understand the mechanisms of it, but you still want to make it the best possible pink suit there is. Mm. Okay. Well, I think it was a good start. It was a good start. There were some trends in there. You know, the, 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 the knitwear has been very hot this season, the return of tailoring, the pink and red and Motor orange. Cars. So, you know, it's all ticking. Yeah, it talks to a 25-year-old, talks to a 26-year-old. It's talking to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. uh, 25 year old <laughs> <laughs> Okay then, can we can we close it like this? Thank you very much, and thank you. thanks for coming. Thank right? you. Thanks for having and me. And see you soon. Bye bye.